to all the students of IAS Gurukul. Uh, I wish you all the very best for all the phases of your exam, and especially with uh, sociology. I believe that uh, all the kind of efforts that Sir is putting in and you guys are putting in will only show up when you have constant, uh, uh, what do you call, checking your answers, going through tests, getting it checked with someone who's experienced, who's like, because like, as I was telling in the interview, I did not know what, where I was going wrong till November. When I got it checked, he told me where I went wrong and where I went, was doing right. So that's when changed all my game in sociology. So I think that is one of the things which is very important. That was the reason I picked up sociology because the mentors are available. So make use of it, write your answers, get them checked, know where your strengths are. I'm, I'm very sure the mentors would be well experienced to pick it up in a second what you're not seeing it in your answers. And the second thing is in UPSC, even I believe it's never mugging up. All my class to, in IAM, everyone used to say, Are, ab 24 mein ja ke kya ratta it is never about mugging up at all. It is all about observation, what you observe in your society. Sociology is one that subject which is, allows you to use your creativity as well. So observe and build perspectives. Build those perspectives which are in line with our constitution, with the constitution principles of our country. And I'm telling you, this will work wonders for you. Have opinions which are right, in the right belief and morale of the constitution and observe things. Think about uh, what are happening around you. Say, suppose you're stuck in a, a traffic jam. Just look at it and think, why is it happening? Is it the sinkholes? Is it the wrong traffic management? Is it that the roads are not fine? Is it a haphazard urbanization? Just look around and think through. These are the only things UPSC is going to ask you. And sociology, again, is a very beautiful subject. Learn to think in those perspectives. Learn to observe sociology all around you. Uh, trust me, uh, you will like the subject. And at the same time, when you do this, you would also want to be practical enough to know what works for the exam and not works for the exam. So get in touch with sir. Write, prepare, revise, and present well. Lastly, the most important thing is do not... Uh, uh, be afraid, scared of UPSC. Uh, this is one thing I've always seen in students. Most of them are scared of the exam even before they're giving the exam. Not at all be scared of UPSC. It is also a tough exam like all the other IITs, CAT and everything else. Yes, the stakes are high, but only if you're in calm mind, you will be do able to do those wonders. Uh, in a scared mode, it never works. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Hello, Meghna. Hello, sir. Welcome and heartiest congratulations on having cleared the exam with, uh, should I say, flying colors in your first attempt. Got a very brilliant 83 rank. And that too in the first go, right? In about one, one and a half years, the least amount of time it can take in that much time. You've been able to secure that. So I'm sure others would have a lot to learn from your NVAB short journey. Fine. Uh, let's come to your optional subject. So uh, tell us, Meghna, like, uh, what was the decision making process while choosing the optional? Like, uh, how did you arrive at sociology? Right? Since you had so many choices, uh, to share with the uh, students who are watching this, uh, Meghna does not have a background in sociology as most aspirants. Uh, she has a engineering background. She's done her B.Tech from NIT Varangal. Then she's done her MBA from IIM Lucknow. And uh, so what made you not take up, say, public administration or uh, any of the engineering or science subjects, but sociology? And amongst the humanities also, why sociology? If you could just uh, share your decision making process. So, sir, I finished my graduation in 2016. And again, I'm picking up UPSC in 2019. So I felt the three years gap uh, was something like I had to pick up the subject all over again because in between I changed my stream as well. I went to management. And so I felt it would be a burden for me to cover up all the electrical engineering. It's a vast subject in itself and covering it up along with GS would have been a very 
a tremendous task and i am not very well versed with electrical engineering as well so i am a good pointer mm-hmm. but it would be a very big task so i that engineering subject was out of the window then was management so in management what happens is you be specialize in certain streams like marketing hr or something like that but the upsc paper has questions on all the subjects in mba we do touch up on all the other subjects like operations finance and everything but we go in depth in only few of them and we specialize in them so picking up this finance operations it uh, was again a difficult task it's too vast to cover and there was not much material available so that was a difficult task for me so i zeroed down that i would go with a general subject like humanities and within humanities uh, it was sociology or anthropology hmm. uh, or the public administration psir yes so my uh, mostly interest lied in psir and sociology hmm. these were subjects which i felt were very interesting to me and be- between these two sociology interested the most to me because once i read the syllabus paper i felt that uh, these were the questions which bothered me from the very beginning in life i dev- i never knew the sociology the subject exists hmm. like say gender i was in sales so in sales what happens is even when you are a sales manager and go to a beat in a market they don't even believe that you know see female yes. manager it happened happened to me many times they would outrightly reject that i am a manager they would right. think of me as an intern because hmm. they have never seen female yes in sales so these were the questions that always bothered me and i felt that this was a time for me to enjoy learn and uh, think of all those things i've ever i've always felt and thought of mm-hmm. so i never took the subject sociology as a burden right. it was right. always a uh, learning for me it was always something i reflected upon in my life so i really loved the content of the subject i thought it would be perfect for me and and the plus point about sociology is it overlaps with your gs papers it helps in building that perspective which is needed for interviews and at the same time there's so much of coaching available there are so many mentors available to guide me if at all i'm going wrong which i eventually did i was ending up with 74 score in november 2020 just two months before the exam so if such a situation arises in maybe electrical engineering or management maybe i would not even find someone to tell me what went wrong with me so these were the plus points of sociology and i felt it was perfect for me to choose it that's why i took it up so i found it useful in the sense that at least it was pushing me to write the answers hmm. or else i would not have maybe written uh, because in the earlier days in april or may i clearly remember i was taking five and a half hours to complete the paper where is a three hours paper yeah. so i was able to analyze where i am going wrong what are my weaknesses what are my strengths uh all of that so that way it was very helpful and also they had a lot of papers kind of help me sit for those hours these are the very small things that we do not expect but on the day of the exam rather than remembering things sitting for those 6 hours becomes a bigger challenge so uh, this was the ty- uh, turning point for me i guess so april is when i stopped uh, the prelims so once i got to know it's going to get postponed and i had already given 3 and 1/2 months for prelims yes. so i said uh, let me go for mains because i knew that i was lagging very much over there hmm. so over there i started in april full and uh, mo- uh, mock test for mains and our answer writing practices for sociology megna uh, could you share with the students some tips for answer writing in sociology yes sir so uh, first thing i'd say that you start with uh, previous year papers so start and analyze previous year papers how they are asking what kind of questions are they are coming up with especially in paper one i think it's definitely helpful uh, at least a uh, four or five questions you don't have to think much and directly write the answer on the day of the exam it saves time it saves effort and you can nicely think about the other uh well, like the thinking part answers and write them nicely so at least for paper 1 it helps a lot and in paper 2 a lot of issues and uh, problems that student faces they sound like gs2 sorry uh, gs answers in paper 2 so for that what strategy i used is i used to use terms from paper 1 what all are the terms or what all thinkers if at all i don't find any thinkers 
like say the constitutional amendment bill there's no way we can bring up any thinker we don't know any sociologist who has written anything on the social so what happens is we might think that our answer is sounding more like a gs answer so if at all you can write any perspective that you think from a marxist perspective let's suppose a farmers issue or link it with the rural background and say that the technology is changing so your fops are changing ropis are changing so certain things just to try try and make it sound more sociological and instead of saying marriage as a social relation use terms like social institution some operate uh, some sociological jargon and terms in your some terms yes not overdoing it but at least some terms wherever they i felt that they were useful i used them and then uh, epw is something i followed hmm. small small uh, articles are written in epw and hmm. farm laws ke upar also there were many laws uh, many uh, small analysis uh, epw provides so that also was helpful for me nigna if you could share with us uh... what was your uh, like you know how did you make it in one attempt yeah? like so how was your daily routine how many hours did you pack in a day is that would be so, an activity of so many aspirants it uh, quite a lot of things worked for me so i'm happy about it even covid helped me in a bit i would definitely say because that three months of time that i got before prelims was a was a, a ble- blessing for me in disguise because Uh, as i told you till january i did not pick up the exclusive mains part i was lacking in essay i was lacking in ethics i did not pick up all of that which i could not do i did it in those three months and after my prelims i did not pick up anything new so this was something which helped me uh, a lot of aspirants do this mistake that they do keep in this mains exclusive part after the prelims so what right. happens is they don't revise the actual static the part which is already there Correct. and they add up new material becomes a burden so one thing that helped me was i did not add up anything new apart mm-hmm. from some additions in my sociology because i was lacking over there after my prelims i kept revising and writing my answers and i focused more on presenting my answer writing up my paper within 3 hours and adding new points like diagrams or flow charts or examples that i picked up and i used to write small um, snippets from the newspaper hmm. every time like there's a report cag report or in cbi's report or any report which comes up in the paper in the recent times i used to make notes of them and keep it aside and those notes i started uh, revising and using them in the answers a lot of my fellow students uh, do write but don't use it in the answers uh, that's that's very important to use so that was one and uh, the other important thing for my mains i think has been uh, trying to be a little different and writing things a little differently uh, from others i have always focused on this because this is something i think i learned from my mba mm-hmm. they always say that you have to be a little different to get picked up marketing ultimately is that only okay. so that kind of helped me in my uh, answer writing as well like i'll give you a small example i was talking about the cag's report right so in, whenever we writing a local self government answer we'll always say one of the constraint is financial uh, constraint they do not have the they don't use the taxing power and many of them even don't have the taxing power but cag's report clearly says that 80% of the taxes only come from property tax and uh, and only 1% of the lsg's taxes or something we contribute to the gdp which is a very low number so instead of just writing that there's a financial crunch we can use these terms which would make it look more likely more credible in your answers and uh, so yeah real life examples is something which you can always try in gs and the second part is between my prelims and mains i had given my heart out so my day used to be 17 hours nearly 16 to 17 hours and in that i used to study for at least 11 to 12 hours 11 yeah 11 to 12 hours i would write the paper and analyze it i never left the paper without analyzing very nice so you literally burned the proverbial midnight oil yeah to there were problems like i love sleeping for very long napping in the afternoon yes. so 
one thing I told myself was this three months is not just mine. Just leave this three months on uh, your food. I was gaining a lot of weight. I was not going out because COVID was also there. Yes. Uh, so uh, three hours, at least three, four hours would go in giving a paper a day. Yes. Analyzing a paper would take one more hour. And my sociology was always there on a timetable, every day's timetable. Yes. So over there, these things itself take up seven, eight hours to me. Mm-hmm. Any GS would only, I would have only left with one, two hours. So how much ever I'm doing 10, 11 hours, it's still found, I would still uh, run out of time. So mm-hmm. that's how my timetable used to be in those days. And another part which helped me, I think fourth, fourth point of what helped me in my main strategy is I did not uh, leave my essay and ethics. Absolutely. It, my scores also reflect the same. My GS scores have been pretty normal, not very extraordinary. But what sailed me through is my <laughs> essay, optional and ethics. These are the only subjects which sailed me through. So I was very sure that anyone who is giving a third attempt, fourth attempt would be better than me in GS on any day. If I was going to make any difference, like again, the marketing thing that I'm telling you, if I'm going to make any difference, this difference is going to come up from those papers, which I think I'll be better than others, not from the papers that they are better than me. So, so, yeah. so did a SWOT analysis, another MBA tool, somewhere subconsciously. Yes, yes. So you, I think this is a conscious effort that every uh, student also has to do. Yes. It's always about what UPSC asks and what are your strengths and weaknesses, where you are fitting in. Play your strengths and try to minimize your weaknesses as much as you can. Right. Also, maybe now uh, share with us. Uh, did you, you know, you quit a decently well paying job, right? Uh, Meghna was working as a marketing manager in a multinational corporation and uh, having done her MBA from uh, IIM Lucknow. So that too is a very decent thing to quit. So did you have any uh, sort of insecurities that what if I don't hear the exam? Yes, sir. I mean, because UPSC was always there in my mind. It was not something which had come up only after MBA. So it's hmm. very guilty that I wasted all these years. I mean, uh, at the other end, I don't feel it was wasted also. It is a different perspective that one builds in life. My father even today says, you made it in the first attempt because of your this mentality that you built up all these years, this exposure that you built all these years. So coming to the point that uh, leaving the job, the only thing that I always felt was I would definitely regret if I am not giving a chance for UPSC. Definitely, that would all be my regret of my life. But if I quit the job and come for UPSC, if I make it well and good, very well, nothing like it. If I don't may- make it, maybe I would have felt that one, two years of my life would have been gone. Mm-hmm. So on option A, I have a hundred percent regret and on option B, I have a maybe may not be regret. So, so again, a uh, mental, uh, proper mathematical calculation. So why should, you, this. Yeah. Yeah. why should you go with an option, which is a hundred percent regret? Uh, Meghna, would you share with us which aspect of the exam did you find the uh, find academically the most challenging? Sir, uh, I think uh, it is a balance of prelims and mains. But mains again becomes more challenging because the weightage in the exam for mains is high and so the optional comes into play. Yes. So I felt academically uh, mains is the toughest. And should we take in the most uh, beginning with your GS uh, preparation? Uh, did you, since you had a uh, very limited time, right, compared to many other aspects, did you uh, have an integrated approach to preparing for GS prelims and means, or did you uh, prepare them separately? What was your approach? So, sir, in the initial times, I actually started from a scratch. I mean. Uh, from the point that I did not even know what NCRTs were when I came in June 2019 because I was from a state background. So from June to around October, November, I put it in an integrated approach only. I did not do anything 
especially for mains or especially for prelims yes i was just learning the subjects i still remember i was telling my mom that i'm getting a hang of it now like mm-hmm. till november 2018 uh, sorry uh, when was it yeah yeah the same time around november 2019 yes 2021 was the mains so november 2019 till then i did the integrated approach till in november i started giving my mocks uh, prelims mocks yes so everyone was telling that this is your first attempt you have to start your pre pretty earlier than everyone else so i started in around november 2019 and at that time is uh, i was scoring pretty low 55 50 so then i thought okay till december i'll do the sociology part i'll get done with it and i'll start in january pretty soon my main prelims only approach so, right uh, so till december i could say that i did the integrated approach in january around i put everything else from mains apart did some bits of sociology but started my prelims preparation properly in the mid of january so from about till the mid of uh, january till the prelims exam you did not touch uh, the mains only portions of the exam no no is that correct yes sir i could not actually because though i was wanting to that 6 yes. 7 months had become very tough i mean i was taking gs coaching then i was taking optional coaching also my day was pretty hectic uh, so i could not pick up though i really believe that everyone should do it that was a mistake by my end but yeah uh, i did not pick it up only few parts i did like disaster management internal security i did read about them a lot a bit of it but didn't know how to read it so i used to just read it that there is capf cisf just like that and, uh, and then, yeah please yes so till uh, mid of january i finished my co- uh, optional once like mm-hmm. all the notes that i could get the reading that i can do once yes then yes. Uh, the usual ncrts and the mains plus ncrts integrated once mm-hmm. i did them twice maybe the ncrts i read them twice or something Right. then in the middle of january somewhere i started preparing for my prelims properly like giving sectional tests in papers uh writing down my mistakes from the papers economic survey budget how many prelims mocks would you have taken in all before the actual exam? i think many or uh, maybe 50 or 50 or 60 because i got the time right i mean from january till march i did it very consistently with lo- little less mocks but more of revision type yes. march is when we got to know that we have to with this covid we have to go home so i got home and then after coming home then i did the revision part uh, maps and all world maps schemes this uh, ex- execu- executive thing like exclusive thing for prelims that science and tech part i started picking them up uh, properly Mm-hmm. then a by april it was more or less sure that prelims is going to get postponed right. tell me megna what was your approach uh, for essay preparation essays sir in the starting i did write one two essays i found them decent for myself i showed it to my parents and then to few of the other students so they said they were decent enough is just that that wow factor that i was talking about that was missing like my sociology as well mm-hmm. so then i went and checked my check the top up question answer answer papers and then a lot of my other friends who were giving uh, exam or have already uh, succeeded in upsc they were uh, giving me tips then yes so so that's when i understood that uh, i have to like begin my intro so i focus much on my intro and ending my conclusion with where the intro starts right yes and so i thought i should be a little different from others i did not focus on writing a short story i felt that was something everyone was doing very well, very much starting your introduction with a short story i did not find it well and so what i did was firstly in the essay one is the philosophical part for that i based my knowledge on the ethics paper yes so the ethics paper gs4 uh, i linked a lot of that and i used that material in my philosophical uh, section of the essay i think one of the essays are definitely going to be philosophical these days yes. whole section yes 
and the other section there are certain themes that upsc keeps on repeating like water uh, gender technology climate change international relations so for these i made notes like for 5 6 uh, pages on each topic and that's how at least i had some material to start with in every essay and then i made sure that i conclude in a uh, circle so i this was my strategy like i make the essay in a circle yes it's like uh, now i seem to have lost you yeah yes so that is very correct you know so just to highlight that meghna did prepare specifically for the essay a thing which lot of students ignore you know, they just think that having prepared for gs and optional they are wise enough and you know well read enough to just straight away attempt the essay but it does require it's worth 250 marks so yes sir and also the the approach that firstly secondly thirdly socially politically i i think um, Uh, that would not fetch marks anymore i mean I, if i see all the students are using the same thing we definitely have to do something little different something which is uh, standing out and so it's one paper where you can express some sort of bring in yes. your creativity unlike gs or and, papers and there is good scope of scoring as well yes very good yeah in the gs papers you hardly cross 100 or 100 yes Uh, Migna, what was the biggest uh, impediments that you faced in your uh, preparation? Biggest impediment. One is setting the timetable. I'm a lazy person as well. So, like all the other aspirants, for me, I would set up a timetable. I would follow it for four days. Then again, it would become a difficult thing for me because if I sleep or change my sleep pattern, I would I was not able to follow up that one. so that uh, became one of the biggest challenges and uh, let me tell uh, the viewers that meghna is uh, this is her humility speaking actually she is not uh, lazy right <laughs> she is a hard and smart worker so, uh, tell us like uh, what was the role of your uh, family in your success in your preparation journey yes sir i think they are the those, i would not say a pillar of strength there was something i was like a whole uh, bed that i was sitting on not just one thing that they were in because i would feel that all my family had a portion in my personality that had bring up and what made me this and especially in upsc as well yeah. so first thing is leaving my job so i am has a heavy package student take loans yes so it's a 20 25 25 25 around uh, lakhs fee yes. so when i'm working i was doing it by my own i was paying my loan uh, interest and everything but when i stopped quit my paying then i had to my parents have to pay it now i'm no more even earning and i'm putting this loan burden on my family financially uh, there was we were fine enough so my parents were firstly never ever uh doubting my call on upsc they said whatever financial issues are there we'll pick it up so that was one of the first things and the second thing was my parents never told me that you are 24 and a girl you have to get married soon so if you're picking at something now because even if i make it in the first attempt i'm going to be 26 by the time i make it yes and if at all that not that second attempt is 27 third attempt 28 Yes. so yes. they never told me this never had come up in our discussions that you have to get married also so that psychological burden or the social burden even though they faced it they never put it on me they never said these things to me and thirdly when i went to delhi and when i was telling that these 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 things are the things that i want uh, they were very uh, supportive my father helped me out in picking up everything in the uh, delhi and whatever i they believed in me when i said that this is this won't work for me uh, they never said that like anthropology something my father had heard from a lot of his colleagues and everyone that anthropology is a subject which is working for everyone doing wonders and especially in 2018 with akshar jain sir and everyone else it was doing very well yes. and i was on sociology and when i said that sociology interests me and that's why i want to do it he does not he believes in me like he says okay 
and even in april when i was doing my mains preparation when the covid thing got up and uh, though it is my first attempt a lot of other candidates have told me this is a mistake that you would be doing because you do not know prelims yet it's a very though last year prelims paper seem okayish because the coaching material people have already in, inculcated those questions in your mock test that's why you feel like prelims is doable the actual prelims paper looks like a shocker you don't waste your time and prepare for prelims that time i took the decision that no i'm going to do my mains even then they supported because my parents have been an integral part of my preparation and coming to my sister she is like this person who studies uh, which is a very hard worker so in uh, 2020 i think she gave her pg exam mm. neat and she used to work for 16 17 hours a day so when i was doing my 10 11 hours i never felt that i'm doing something great or you know something undoable i always used to feel that she has done much more than me just to uh, share with the audience uh, meghna's sister the one she is mentioning uh, her name is varshita and uh, she is a younger sister she is currently yes. pursuing her pg in uh, pediatrics yes right? sir if i remember correctly and her both her parents uh, they are uh, in government jobs her mother is in banking her father is in a desk form they have made my uh journey in upsc very very comfortable yes. and uh, yet supportive like on the other side my mom's a very strict person mm-hmm. right from childhood i was shit scared of her mm-hmm. and even through my upsc journey if i at all i'm sleeping yes. not studying yes. if i listen to her voice in and around i would wake up and study thank you very much thank you very much sir